have you ever wanted to guest on a podcast like this one that you're listening to right now? Well, you can. You can definitely do this by visiting a website called Podmatch, where you can sign up and be available for all different types of podcasts that you can guest on. Or you can even search for a podcast and say, I want to, I want to guest on your podcast. I think we'd be a good match. So if you want to do this, you can go to our unique link, which is joinpodmatch.com forward slash reality. And you can sign up and do exactly that. And you can find us and you can guest on our podcast. So again, that unique link is www.joinpodmatch.com. That's J-O-I-N-P-O-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com forward slash reality, R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and you can be a guest on our podcast. Welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing 90 Day OG, but before we do, we have some announcements, we have some hot goss, and we probably have some memes we'll read as well, but let's start with the announcement so the big well before we do the big big announcement let's do the first announcement so family chantelle again guys we are covering it we're going to be covering it with Letitia, which means that we will be recording those on the weekend so you'll be getting that episode either on a sunday or a monday depending on when we we schedule so this Last episode, you'll probably have it on Monday. So there's that. The second announcement, Selling Sunset. Again, hoping to get those to you as quickly as possible. I have only watched the first episode, guys. I'm behind. But I'm hoping to get that to you as soon as possible. But we might be riding with Selling Sunset for most of November. We should have it done by then, though. So hopefully we can get through that as quickly as possible but i'm telling you the first episode hooked line and sinkered into this the coming up on looks amazing which are most of you already watched the the show so you know so i'm excited for it um so yeah we'll start getting those to you s- as quickly as possible so um probably we'll start getting those maybe t- friday which i'm recording this on a thursday maybe but no guarantee Um, but for sure, you'll start seeing those episodes coming your way by next week, probably starting on Monday. Um, but let's go into the big, big announcement. So the big announcement is, well, you know, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Somewhat, not quite there yet, but with Christmas coming, um, and I'm going to be off of work my day job for about three weeks, I'm actually going to be taking about a month off from podcasting starting December, say 6th or 7th until uh, the new year. So you're not going to get anything from from me uh, on this podcast. Then um, for those people who listen to Next Take podcast. Same idea. You won't be getting anything from us for about a month. Um, and But you will get the, I believe, the final episode for Next Take Podcast. You will get, believe it's on the 15th, if I'm correct with that, uh, like the 14th or 15th of December. So you'll still have that episode for those who listen to it. And if you don't listen to Next Tech Podcast, hop over there. It's a fun episode, fun, fun podcast over there. So you will get that, though, about 
a week or two after I'm, I'm, I'm on break here. So there is, there is that, but, um, we will be out for about a, a month. So with that said, here's what's going to happen. So make sure that you are still getting something in that first week of December. Um, so we'll be doing 90 day OG for sure. We'll be getting a sister wives, whether that's with Letitia is to be determined. That's something I need to discuss with her, but you will definitely be getting sister wives, whether it's just me or both me and Letitia. So you will get that. You'll also get 90 day toe and you will get family Chantel, but that will be a solo recording. And you will also, if it's still going at that point, F boy Island as well. Um, we should be slowing down with shows at, at that point, but shows like you won't be getting is like Merida first sight. I'm sure will still be going. You're not going to get that probably. Um, and a golden bachelor will be done by then. I'm not sure what's going on with, with Bachelor in Paradise, although I haven't been covering that in a little bit. I'm still trying to do a full thing here. I'm still just so many shows, so something has to give. But uh, like Bachelor in Paradise, I'm not even sure what's happening there. If that's still going to be going, but anyway. So yeah, that's what's going to happen. Of course, I'll be reminding you as we lead up to that time. You still have me for about a month. So, yeah, but don't not to worry. It's not like things aren't going to be happening in the background. Maybe I'll still post memes on the socials. Um, but yeah, like there won't be any recordings being done. Things are still going to be happening in the background with the podcast because I have a lot I'm going to be doing with the podcast. Um, changes that are going to be made with the podcast. So, Although I'm not recording, I am focusing on the behind the scenes of the podcast. So um, that's what's going to be happening with both Reality Tea Times 2 as well as Next Take Podcast. Both of them are going to be on a hiatus for roughly a, three weeks to a month. So there's that. Um, so I think that's it with... Uh, announcements but let's get into the hot goss below deck regular old below deck is heading our ways guys um we are going to be seeing the og below deck with our new captain <sighs> boo um i don't hate him i just that's Miss Lee. But anyway, um, for those, again, who don't know who our, the new captain is going to be for Below Deck uh, OG, it's going to be Captain Carrie, who was the captain on Below Deck Adventure. So that's who is going to be the captain on on this. So I guess Below Deck Adventure is finite. Um, so season 11 is what we're on. That's going to be starting on February 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Bravo. Um, and we're going to have a 75-minute episode. So that's great. Uh, so I guess we will be with Med until, like, the end uh, of January at least. So who is going to be the crew and who of those people are going to be returning? Well... Fraser is back as Chief Stew. So hopefully, hopefully Fraser does a lot better this time around than he does than he did the first time. I think the first the last season was really a learning curve for him. So let's see how that goes um, with with him. I, I hope everything goes well with him. Y'all. Ben. Ben is back. This is the Ben who fucked Camille. Camila? What's her name? Camille? Camille, right? This is that guy. I'm shocked that he's back, but he was a good worker, so I'm not shocked on that sense, but I'm shocked that he's back. No Camille, but let's see what happens. This was the one that, was he the one that 
there was Camille and then the chick from South Africa came out at the end and he's like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Is that, is that, that's it? It's been a minute. But anyway, he's back. So we'll see him. Of course, he's back as a deckhand. I'm probably going to butcher this guy's name, but we have Anthony Icracane. Icracane? Sorry. But he is the chef, and y'all, he's cute. <laughs> I'm going to post pictures. I have pictures of everybody except the Campton. I didn't care. But, um, yeah, the, wow. I will be posting pictures on on the on the socials so you can take a look. Oh my goodness. Oof, he's cute, like I said. Um and then we have Kat Ba, I think is how you say her name. It just says stew. I don't know. I don't know what if she's chief stew. No, she can't be chief stew, because obviously Fraser's chief stew. Duh. So yeah, she's a stew. We'll find out about her. She's from Orange County. So yeah. Um, we have Marie Sunny Marquise. She is a deck hand. She's pretty. She's pretty pretty. So let's see. Girl power if she is going to be just as badass as the female deck crew that we have right now. I mean, seriously bad ass anyway then we have zandy olivier i believe is her name she's a stew we have barbara pascal she's a stew we have kyle steely he looks like a douche and he is a stuck hand um and that's it I, that feels like a small like i feel like we should have some more deckies but like I feel like when we saw, I guess we saw three deckies and no boson, I guess, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I will post those on our socials so you can take a look and see what that's all about. But that's it for Hot Goss um, for now. Let's do some of the memes. Of course, we'll have memes on our socials. They'll be there before this episode is posted. So, first one is, and this is in Nick's words, I don't want to go to Cersei. I'm joking. Spoiler alert, he is not joking. Of course he's not joking. I don't want to go to fucking Cersei. Shut it. Next one. I don't need to see Gino's toilet anymore, thank you. Once was enough. For fuck's sakes. He's fucking disgusting. And he wants to sit here and talk about Jasmine. We'll get to it. But, um... Next, she said living in a walk-in closet was temporary. She has been there for three years. Temporary is three months, not three years. And that is basically it. So the rest of the memes will be on our socials as always. But let's get into the reason that we are here. 90 Day OG Season 10, Episode 5. Committed and matrimony. Rob and Sophie is our first trash heap this time. So, so it's the next day now from their little kids conversation, which very quickly gets dropped like a hot potato in this episode. So he says, we need to talk. So let's go outside into the courtyard because where the fuck can you talk in this fucking apartment? So let's go outside. So they talk. Um, and he says, like, he didn't sleep. You know, she was there sleeping. Because remember the comment he made last week of, I don't even know how she can't sleep. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so he didn't sleep. Um, and he says, if she didn't want children then she should be with someone who wants the exact same things as she does. And that's fair. I mean, listen, I have no issues if this girl does not want to have children because she's just like, fuck them kids. I don't want kids. It's fine. Everyone's entitled to whatever their future lives look like. I do worry if she says she doesn't want children because of the medical situations. 
is that a true want or is that a fear? However, that aside, I do agree with him This in the sense of, you know, if she doesn't want children, why the fuck you with me? But here's the problem. Y'all don't fucking talk to each other. If you want her to be like, you know, don't fucking waste my time, be with somebody who doesn't want children. Mind you, can we remember she's 23 years old? Mind you, I, I knew I wanted to be a mother at 23 myself. And I was actively trying at that time at 23, but that was my journey, right? And I'm sure there's other people who are close to that age who are also the same way. And like, that was our journey. This is a different journey for her. But I always have to still remind myself though, but that was an unusual time. I don't know if I really would have tried to have kids at 23 if I knew better and I didn't. So she's 23. She doesn't want kids. She knows better than I did at 23. But yeah, if she doesn't want to have children at all, then why are you with this person who does want to have children? Y'all going to have problems. You're going to resent each other. So there's going to be problems for sure. But Rob, again, you are supposed to be the quote unquote adult in this relationship. Like, you know, you're the older one. You, you ha- Your brain's supposed to be fully ass developed. Did nobody in this fucking relationship think, you know, but maybe we should talk about what we want and what maybe we don't want. And then that would have been the time where Sophie would be like, you know what? I really don't want to have kids and this is why. Okay, let's talk about that. Do we go anywhere here? Maybe this was a fun time and that's it. You know what I mean? But y'all didn't talk about it. Just like she's not talking about the fact that she's bisexual. This woman is still trying to figure herself out and she's hopping into a relationship with somebody just so what? And it's a it's actually a very telling thing that she says a little later on that I'm like, huh, okay. Which I'm not surprised by per se, but I'm just like, huh, okay. But let's continue. And guys, I'm, I'm actually really drinking a tea today. <laughs> I'm tired. I needed to drink some tea. Anyway, so let's let's go on here. So he basically just wants to know what she is thinking. That's kind of where he's at right now. What are you thinking? Let's talk about what I'm thinking. Let's figure this out. And he asks, like, do you want to be a parent at all? Whether that is if you don't want to be pregnant, because she says, again, I don't, I can't see myself being pregnant. Here's why. And she explains that to him again. And I feel like, I mean, she's very quick to kind of be like, you didn't even ask me any of these questions when I told you about this. Your girlfriend, your fiance has told you this thing and you're not even asking anything. And it's like, okay, but Sophie, you're thinking like a rational woman who says, I'm telling you that I have this surgery done probably went into some details that the surgery was probably done in that area and you are thinking what the fuck like if a man were to say oh i had surgery done on my balls you're gonna ask the questions of oh shit like are you okay is there an effect here on 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 reproduction like what's happening women think that way men don't (laughs) men just don't think that way unless like i don't know because again, like I was very open and honest on this podcast last week about the fact that I have PCOS. And when I told my boyfriend that I had PCOS, and this was a while ago, but I feel like I, when I told him this, he did ask, what does that mean? And we went into that conversation. And I'm still opening up to him about things because how PCOS, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> how PCOS affects me or affects any individual woman is different every i feel like every, there's no rhyme nor reason to what a woman experiences who has pcos for me my pcos actually really wasn't affecting things that you would expect it to affect i'm very knock on wood fortunate in that aspect but i have found in the last few years that my that my PCOS things that I never thought was contributing to, like my PCOS contributing to, 
actually could be. So there are certain things that have happened over the years that I've had to open up about and tell him and explain to him, yeah, this could be because of that. Is it necessary that my PCOS is getting quote unquote worse? I don't know. But am I doing what I need to do to make sure it doesn't get quote unquote worse? Absolutely. But maybe for him in that moment, that was something he was thinking like a rational person. But Rob is not a rational person. (laughs) And Rob, even though 32 years old, is a child. He really is a child. So that's that's the thing too. My brother is my brother is 20 years old. My brother would not think to ask questions about a woman's reproductive system, especially if he's not, I would hope, in that moment, that moment in time where he's hoping to have kids right now. That's how Rob is. Rob 32 asks acts like my 20-year-old brother. That's fucking sad. I have a realization here. But in in general, Sophie, men don't think like we do. And sometimes you have to spoon feed them shit. So anyway, but I also think Rob is also just very self-involved. So there's also that too. Um, so yeah, so for her, in terms of feeling whether or not she could be a parent, she says it's not that she doesn't see it, but she has to figure out her life right now. Um, that you know, she just got here. She's talking about like she just got here and all of this and all of that, and she's just trying to figure out her life and that pregnancy. You know, you know, pregnancy is the problem for her in terms of, you know, it's not that she doesn't want to be a parent. This is what she's saying. But it's about that it's the pregnancy aspect of things. So what I, and again, that's no shocker. But what I am going to say here is he isn't asking whether or not you can have a baby today. Rob has never once said, let's get pregnant today. (laughs) He's never once said that. He's not expecting you to do, you guys have a wedding to to planning and do. She has a K-1 visa, a green card Everything that's kind of going on, getting herself situated, potentially getting a job, all of those things. She has a life to establish. I don't think he's expecting her to have a baby today. I don't think he's even expecting her to have a baby in a year or two. He just wants to know if at any point when we are ready to have this conversation and potentially have a child, are you okay with this? Especially if they do end up going the route that they end up deciding on. That means that means money. So we're going to have to hustle the fuck out of this in order to make that happen. Those two can never afford surrogacy. I'm just telling you this right now. He then says to her, which I think was actually, it, 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 was, it was fine. He says, I don't want you to walk into a life you don't see for yourself. Straight up. Because then what's going to end up happening is you're going to resent him. You're going to resent whatever kids you have. You're going to resent the life you have. If you don't want to have children, then don't have children. But, and I keep saying this, if it's if it's because you're afraid to experience pregnancy, which is, a, I think, a normal fear, I think, for anybody. I think for any woman at any time, like, I've never had a surgery like this done. I've never had any real serious issues to that extent with my reproductive organs. I've never had that uh, problem. Thank God. But I think it's still a fear that any woman can go through, whether it's your life is at stake the way it was for her. Whether it's my child's life is at stake, which I think is a lot that women tend to deal with. We all deal with the fear of what is going to happen. It's the unknown. And I think when we're dealing with even pregnancy loss, as an example, that is such an unknown when you are trying to get pregnant and you don't know what's going to happen, 
if you were to get pregnant, am I going to carry to term? Am I not going to carry to term? And that's a fear. So I think every woman, unfortunately, goes through fear because, again, pregnancy loss, although I feel like is something that's being talked about a lot more in this day and age. And I think it's, it's scary, but it's needed. And that's just one one side of, of something that I think a woman experiences. And that is okay. I don't. Listen, I want to be a mother. That's something I want. But I still have a fear of some, you know, being pregnant to whatever extent that is or whatever the fear that's coming from or whatever. I have that. And I don't know anyone who doesn't have that to some extent. So that's perfectly okay. But when you are dealing with a medical situation that was completely out of her hands, she was young when it happened. And if if it was missed, she wouldn't be here right now. That's a serious fear. That's a fear that needs to be addressed. And I do wonder if her parents ever did get her therapy for that. Um, or if they're just like, well, okay, you know, it's done. They got it. It's dealt with. And that's, that's fine. Um, it's not fine. Cause it just, obviously it's affected her psych, her psychologically. So I don't know. I can't speak to that, but it's not easy uh, re- releasing a fear either. So even if she has had psychological help for this, it's always easier said than done to release the fear. Um, it's the only sense of control she has. So she says that she's willing to work on some sort of solution. So he says, okay, there are two options then. It's either, or she says, there's there's two options for this. It's either adoption or surrogacy. So surprise, surprise not. He says that he, if he has a choice, he'd rather it be surrogacy. That way it's, still his dna right his his whole thing is that he wants to be able to create little hymns so okay i mean again not surprised by that um but this will be interesting to see because whatever process they decide to go for it's going to be expensive it's going to be we more money if they try to do her eggs and his sperm into this woman's body. So it's, these still don't got that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, no, this is what will happen. This is what will happen. She, she, her family has that kind of money, apparently. So what he's going to end up doing is being like, do you think your parents or like your family can help out? Like, you know, that's what's going to happen. He's going to ask her to ask her family. So anyway. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, but we're, I guess we're putting a pause on that for now. Um, so then we see her calling her mom and she says that, um, or her mom says that, um, she she doesn't like him. She doesn't like Rob, but you love him. So, (laughs) so she says that, um. Her mom says that she apologizes for whatever. And Sophie ends up telling her mom about the fact that they had this argument about children. And her mom says what the rest of us are saying is, how hasn't this conversation come up before? Because your 23-year-old daughter is in a relationship with a 32-year-old man. Their lives are completely different. That's why. Um, Actually, not that different. But anyway... So she says that she might do surrogacy because he really wants to have kids. But her mom says, okay, but this worries me because I feel like you might be just doing this to appease him. And then you might end up having regrets and, you know, potentially regretting your children. (laughs) Um, She says that, you know, I just never really thought about kids because of what I've gone through, obviously. And she does, though, realize that maybe she needs to really think about it before jumping into 
doing this. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. Um, but now it looks like Rob and Sophie are going to go out. Oh boy. Let's guess who they're going to go out with. They're going to go out with his friend Tarai. Fuck. <laughs> but Sophie also says that she has asked her friend to come out as well. And her friend, her friend's name is Soraya, I think. So she's going to be coming out as well. And she met Soraya on the BFF app, the Bumble app, or whatever the hell. She met her there. Um, so yeah, this is going to be real interesting. So anyway, Tarai, he's there kind of waiting for them. And he just goes in on her immediately as soon as she gets here. Have you met any new friends lately? Have you been on the app lately? I never heard of a best friend dating site. Like, I don't even know about dating sites. Like, he's just going in on her immediately. And I said, you know what, Tarai, set the fuck down and calm the fuck down. Because I get it. You're trying to stick up for your friend and all this bullshit. But that's their fucking life. Stay the fuck out of it. Maybe you need to find somebody to stick your dick into and stop worrying about what other people are doing. For fuck's sakes. Shit. <laughs> anyway, he's going to TV. But anyway, so, yeah. Try as an idiot, like I said. Um, he's like, you know, I have questions in this shit. And I wrote, who gives a shit that you have questions? You're not his family. You're not her family. So set the fuck off. Seriously, this guy needs an outlet. I don't know what his outlet needs to be, but he needs an outlet. And I actually wrote, like, listen, because he keeps talking about the fact that he's ever heard of a of a friend dating site. I have not been on Bumble ever, ever. Bumble came after I was already in a relationship. I've never been on Bumble. But I even knew there was a friend side of Bumble. I even knew this. So what? <laughs> Just because you're fucking ignorant and you're out there looking for puss doesn't mean that something doesn't exist. Your ignorance in this moment in time is not bliss. It's It's so ridiculous and beyond dumb that I'm just like, Get this guy off my screen because if he can't open up his mind to new things and understand new things, then I don't know what to tell you. Now, does that explain how he saw her on that? No, it doesn't explain it at all. Um, but from my understanding, if you're not careful, you can show up on the regular Bumble site as well as the best friend one from my understanding so maybe that's an option but again man this guy's ignorant we'll get into really and truly how fucking ignorant he is because he then goes on to say you know women you know they do whatever they want and they can cheat and all this i'm like so what only women cheat then only women cheat men don't cheat too okay all right, let's stop acting like women are, you know, these bitches ain't loyal or some shit. This isn't a Chris Brown song. Calm the fuck down because what Chris Brown forgets to mention is he's an asshole too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck. Anyway. Um, so then her friend shows up, Soraya. And then Rob ends up asking Soraya once they're in the club. He does end up asking her, so... You uh, met Sophie on uh, the front side of Bumble? And she says, yes, I, that's when I, I met her on there. And Tarai then says, so you're not into women then? Oh, my God. Do you know how highly disgusting it is for a man to ask a complete fucking stranger at that, but a woman? So you're not into women, though. You don't, you don't want to play... You know, scissors or some shit. You know what I mean? You don't want to be like scissors sisters with her. Like that's 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 all. Are you kidding me? And how fucking embarrassing! It's more embarrassing to you two fuckers than it is to Sophie and Soraya. But we do have the elephant in the room of well, 
I don't know if necessarily Sophie wants to be sitter sisters with this girl, but she potentially maybe wants to with somebody else. That hasn't been said yet. But it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like how fucking dense. Fuck this guy and fuck Rob. Fuck sakes. You want know, to women then? Oh, God, disgusting. Um. Anyway, so Soraya says no, she's not. Um, and Sophie says, you know, this is awkward though because it's like in her in the moment says it's awkward because no one here, not even her friends, her friend knows that she is bisexual. So clearly, that's not the intention with this girl because she doesn't even know. And she says that she is still on the app, but just on the friend side, she says, but she says that there are bi people on the friend side. And she says, I guess I should be telling him soon. And she says that she doesn't feel like she's doing anything wrong. Even, I, I was confused by this. I felt like she was saying that she wouldn't be doing anything wrong if she wanted to explore it. I don't know if that, maybe I heard that incorrectly. But, Sophie, you would be if he didn't agree with it, number one. Number two, if he doesn't know and you're exploring it, then it's still cheating. Just like he's doing to you. We'll get to that. Like now. So, then in the next scene, we get on-screen text that says, Sophie called the producers uh, to say that she moved out of Rob's apartment the previous night and rented her own place. So, we're there at her place. And she tells us that she had a dream, apparently, about the fact that he was online cheating on her. She has a dream, maybe not, but it was a dream that she had. And when she woke up the next day, she decided, you know what? I'm going to go through his phone. She said, I don't want me to go through his phone, but I'm going to go through his phone and I'm going to figure this shit out. So she does. And she ends up going on his Instagram, sees nothing, but then goes on a different app. She didn't say what app this was, but goes on a different app. And there she finds, um, you know, videos, I guess, of other women, uh, people asking him for nudes. Um, and she lost her shit. She says she left. She doesn't have her ring. She threw the ring back at him, basically. And she's, yeah, she's mad. And she has every right to be. This is fucked up. This is disgusting. And then we do see a video she clearly recorded on her cell phone um, with him, like, saying to her he only wants her, he doesn't want any of these other people, blah, blah, blah. So, sir, then if you want to be with her, why are you on these sites getting videos from these girls, them asking nudes? Uh, asking for your nudes or maybe you asking for theirs i don't know but why are you on this site because you're not showing her you want to be with her you're showing her that well you know it's not cheating yes it is it's fucking cheating and she just said like maybe some people won't think this is cheating i think this is cheating if my boyfriend was doing this i would be pissed too i would be pissed too so you want to have fun with these girls on the on the on the videos and shit? Have it. You're not gonna have me too. It doesn't go like that that way. I know someone. I have a friend, and I won't name names, but I have a friend who broke up with the boyfriend that she was with when I first met her. And she's long past that relationship now, but she had a boyfriend that she had been with for years, like three years, I think lived together and she broke up with him because after the many times this asshole was going on instagram and checking out like instagram like models and shit and like admiring them and kind of going over kind of similar to this except i don't know how far it went that's about the gist that i know and she's enough's enough because i've put a boundary in place he wasn't respecting my boundary and now i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck it off with that i'm, I'm done and she moved on. She like that that's what you do. You you don't you don't get to do this. You don't get to. 
It's fucked up. So I 100% understand where she's coming from. And I would think this was cheating. Because it's not like it's not like you're going on and watching a porn video. Where you're not interacting with somebody. As soon as you start interacting with somebody, it's done. And in this case, he's interacting with somebody. It feels like a cam girl side of some sort, or maybe like, like I don't know how OnlyFans work, and is that if you can communicate back and forth with somebody on OnlyFans? I've never been on OnlyFans, so I don't know. But I do wonder if it's kind of maybe something like that, like if like you can talk back and forth with somebody that's what it feels like but it's gross it's so disrespectful but she says you know he'll never ask me for sexual videos now i know why that's another thing if you are going to not ask your partner for sexual now she never says that she doesn't send them on her own but the fact that he's not asking for them from her that's weird that's weird that's 100 weird like i totally get that that's 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 weird especially if you're not with each other all the time and you haven't had sex with each other because you're not near each other that's weird but and then you find out this is why no fuck him Completely fuck him anyway she says you know if i was in england i would have left him now, you might not be in England right now, but I would leave him. There are worse places you can end up than fucking England. It's England. I'd be going home, personally. But she makes a comment about her dream. And if it ha- if it has to, like, the fact that she had this dream and she makes a comment about it and she wonders if, like, this was some sort of intuition or something. I don't know. But she says, like, if I have to be the one to leave, he has to live his life. He won't be affected. Everything that I've worked for, that I want to have, my dreams, I won't be able to have that, but he'll be fine. Now, that was telling to me because I'm just like, okay, are you here for Rob? Or are you here for the opportunity? Am I surprised that she would be here for maybe Rob and the opportunity? For sure. I'm not surprised by that at all. I expect that. But to me, it just kind of felt like, I don't know. If It was a weird comment for her to make in this moment, but nonetheless, um, she, um, she just kind of starts crying and she says that it's not even the the fact that he hurt me. It's what am I supposed to do now? And I said, go home. Leave this fucker. Go home. Like I said, there are worse places you could end up than in, in England. It's it's one thing, it's one thing if I'm like, not just not to diss any other country. It's not about that. It's just like I'll say this. If someone was coming here from like Jamaica. And it's not like they live in, like, the nicest home and all of that. They, you know, they live, like, like 10 different family members in one home and kind of situation, which is how it is in some, some places in, for some families in Jamaica because, you know, it's tough out there right now. But that's, that's different. I'd be like, okay, you're trying, to, you're trying to fight here to stay here. And I get that. I respect that. But it's England. I'm like, okay, you're wrong. <laughs> Like, yeah, sure, it's cold, like, 70% of the time, but it's England. It's so different than Canada, really. That's it for Rob and Sophie. So let's move on to Nikki and Justin Igor. So, again, we leave off right with the whole sex conversation shit. And <sighs> this fucking guy, he literally says to her, because she's still going off about like, yeah, fuck me, 48 hours. And he's like, I love this passion from you. What? This girl just told you that you better fuck me or or if. You know what I mean? That's basically what she just said to him. And he's like, I love the passion. What? <laughs> I told, first of all, if I told my man you need to fuck me in 48 hours, he'd be like, okay, when, when and where? You know what I mean? 
But if he wasn't like that, he was more like a Justin Igor, um, he would be like, the fuck then go. <laughs> like, don't, don't. I'm right now watching a whole season of 90 Day AGA. Don't torment me with your sex. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, shit. For those who don't know, don't torment me with your pregnancy. Um, so he says that um she is hurt, but she has no patience. Mind you, she did just get there. But again, you guys haven't been with each other for nine months. I'd have expectations too. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Seriously. Like, why isn't your dick here? Like, what's happening? You know what I mean? Um and he says that she is a sex machine. What's the problem? <laughs> I have no cares that she is has a very healthy sexual appetite. I just have a problem with her literally being like, fuck me or else. That's 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 where I have the problem. So he says that his body is still trying to open up to her. AKA his body is trying to accept the fact that she was male at birth. Let's just call a spade a spade at this point. Do I understand that? Yes, I do. But part of the problem that I have with him is, so then why are you with her again? You were separate for 15 years, give or take. If you weren't comfortable with it then, why all of a sudden are you comfortable with it now? But you're clearly not comfortable with it because you can't even sleep with her. You had no problem when you thought she was female all her life. But now you have a problem when you found out that she actually wasn't female for at least the first 20, call it, you know, give or take, 15 to 20 years of her life. Now you have a problem. Or at least we'll say this, hasn't had female parts her whole life and only did when she was about 20 years old so it's just like if you're not okay with it then why are you with her and i'm not saying he has to be okay with it if that's your if that's your truth and that's your life fine but you're supposed to be marrying her. You're taking her fucking money. You don't have a problem doing those things. But you have a problem being with her intimately. I don't get it. I'm confused. And I'm not in the relationship. So I get her frustration and her confusion. Do I think she's insane? Yeah, because there are ways to go about that than threatening your relationship i'm gone you know what i mean like literally i'm debbie done that, that, that's basically what she did this is ridiculous i don't like that and again i'm trying to go at it at the lens of this show then all the things that have come out um and just see you know the confusion of the timeline of them meeting um ages and stuff anyway um she says that listen i've just never been deprived of sex before um i have and it sucks and it's confusing and like ugh. not like this not but i have been told by a partner who uh, was cheating on me. I don't have to put that out there. Because that is something she has said. Was cheating on me and basically was kind of like, you know, we have sex too much. And uh, I think we should slow down on it. When we would fuck like, all the time. <laughs> and I was like, huh? Like, what's happening? Like, he would slowly change things up on me. And I was like, that's weird. What's going on? And then I found out he was cheating on me. So I was like... That's why. Because as soon as that came out and we fixed things, took some time, but we fixed things and I'm just like, oh, but now you can't get enough. I'm just saying, 
I'm not saying it's necessarily that's what's happening. I think there's something else that's happening. But I know what it feels like to be deprived of it or you feel that deprived of it. And it's confusing and it's frustrating and you want to just yell and scream and be like, what the fuck is happening? And then to kind of be told that there's nothing wrong, it's kind of gaslighting a little bit. So I get that. Um, But mind you, I still didn't say, you better fuck me 48 hours or else. I didn't do that. That's, that's not. I was a lot younger than I am now (laughs) and still had the sense in my mind to maybe not do that. She says, you know, Everything here, the flowers, the park, all of that, it's great and everything, but I need more. Wow. <laughs> I feel like if a man were to do those things for you though, you're just kind of like, oh, this is like that's that's sweet. That's that's doing more. No, her idea of doing more is him like fucking her. And I'm just like, that's so <sighs> surface. It's surface level. That's exactly it. It's surface level. Because I'm just like, okay. All right. Sure thing. But no, I I don't know. These two are surface level. Anyway, he says that Nikki does a lot. Okay. But um, so do I, he says. Then all of a sudden he says, you send so little money only for little things and i'm like wait a minute we were talking about sex a second ago why are we not talking about the fact that she only sends a little bit of money which is bullshit because we know she's like your nose cost seven thousand dollars alone we know she went and helped you renovate your fucking apartment so clearly she's not sending a little bit of money you fucker because then he very quickly like stops talking about it after she like puts him on blast and i'm thinking this is staged this is fake this is a fake like left turn we just went on because it very quickly stops being talked about what the fuck (laughs) they're acting they're actors this is ridiculous that's why they don't fuck because they're they're acting (laughs) anyway um yeah so she says like i got the receipts to show that she has sent money and like how much she has sent. And then he says, I will pay you back. But this was never the fucking argument. I thought we were arguing about the fact that you won't like stick your hot dog in her cooter. I'm so confused by this. And um because he because <laughs> then he says because why bring up the money and i said fucking hell i said because you brought up the money did you forget i'm so confused he's a bad actor mind you because i'm just like you can't even stick to the script (laughs) and she says in her in in the in the moment i um always put you first so who the hell do you think you are then he gets up and walks off, but then she says, bye, little boy. And I'm like, oh my God. It's, mm. oh my God. I actually am starting to prefer Shekinah and Sarper's story because it got really good on toe this week. Because I feel like, okay, we see some grounding happening. Some, some, somewhat. Starting to see that Sarper is at least a real person. The jury's still on Shekinah, but anyway. Because I can't go based on her sister. I need to see her parents. Her daughters, okay. But, like, I need to see more. <laughs> anyway. But, yeah, because I'm just over this storyline. I'm like, God. Um, so, back to the in the moment. Um, she's, you know, she's kind of, again, kind of saying it's always about what you need. It's ever about like as soon as I need something, it's a problem. It's the difference between needing something and then needing something, you know? But we're back at the park now, and she says, I think it's best that I just go home. I'm not gonna stay like this for the next three weeks or be in a relationship like this. And then he says, Um, 
try to be nice with me. Stop fighting all the time. It's too much. Save your power for our love. <laughs> Who wrote their script? Jesus Christ. Save your power for that's what she wants. She wants to save the power for the love, but the love she needs it to be a little more physical than playing games in the park. <laughs> uh anyway. Um so then they hug and make up. She says, you know, with me, I know I can go from like zero to a thousand. Um, if you push my buttons enough and you know she kind of then says like you know your hormonal is a transgender person your hormones are i guess kind of out of whack which makes sense i get it and because of this you know you can tend to go from zero to 100 um and again i can't pretend like i understand because i'm just a woman with womanly hormones that go out of whack anyways um but just from observing other transgender people on the show, on other shows, uh, like watch, like I watch I Am Jazz and everything like that. So it's, um, I feel like with, with Nikki, it's more about that she's a spoiled brat and wants what she wants and wants it now and doesn't have the patience that has nothing to do with her hormones. That has nothing to do with it. Because we saw it with Gabe. He never seemed to be out of whack or anything like that. Or blamed anything on his hormones or anything like that. With like Jazz, for example. Her, her hormones show in different ways. Because she does deal with anxiety and stuff like that. So her, for her, it comes out very differently. But it's just like she still doesn't seem to be like bitchy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, or demanding in well, maybe demanding with her parents <laughs> or her brother, her brothers, but like she, you know, she doesn't seem to be like this, you know what I mean? So I feel like with Nikki, she's just spoiled, she's a spoiled brat. That's what I feel like. And the fact that you didn't fuck me now, then that's the problem. But it's not the end of the world that he didn't fuck you then. And I feel like there's nothing more of a dick limper than complaining that you're not being fucked. You know? I'm just saying. I've never tried. I never complained. <laughs> Due to the frequency or infrequency of how much I have sex. So I can't test this out. But I feel like, you know, who doesn't go well? Just like with Gino. Except Gino's 54. And Justin Igor's 36. So there's a little bit of a difference. But anyway. Um, she does say, you know, despite the hormones, but this has been going on for quite some time. She thinks that he only acts like a child when they talk about their intimacy, which is a red flag for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, she is hopeful. I don't know why. But anyways, let's move on. So we see her calling her mom. And she tells her mom about the conversation, about the intimacy. And her mom asks, okay, but can I ask you this question? Um, you know, did you get, you know, mad? So clearly she's done this before. If her mom has to ask, did you get mad immediately or did you have a civil conversation with him? Clearly shows she's done this before. Um, and clearly, clearly she doesn't fight fair because the minute you guys have an argument that kind of maybe goes a little bit aw awry, you decide, you know what, today's the day I'm going to just tell him I'm trans. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day that I'm going to say that I was a man at birth. Today's the day. And that's when you tell your partner for whom you're supposed to be getting married to that you were actually male at birth. That's not fighting fair. But then you also then wonder why he's acting like this. He's fucking scarred your words from when you told him that you were, you know, you're not 
born a woman when he thought you were. Now, you presented yourself as such. That's a whole other situation that I won't get into because I will never understand what that's like. So that's fine. I'm not going to go there. That was her choice and that was her life to live the way she saw fit. So it's just like, don't complain that he is the way he is right now because you scarred him when he was 20 years old, when he was a baby, when his brain was still developing. Anyway, let's continue. So she says, yeah, she did. Um, and then asks, or uh, kind of says, what about changing how you, like her mom says, about changing how you react to situations? Maybe that will make things a little easier. Why does your mom, when you're a grown ass woman, have to tell you, maybe to change how you react to things? You know, maybe things will go a little smoother. Especially when we're talking about sex. <laughs> And I know sex is important. I know I'm not saying it's not, but um, just getting there after a day and him not fucking you is not enough of a problem to start this argument. Because then you just sound like a little per like a little child begging for your lollipop and being told you can't have it. I didn't mean to use lollipop. That just happened. That was organic. <laughs> But literally though that's like that's what she's doing she's complaining that she can't have her lollipop and she really really wants to suck on that i don't blame her but like calm that down a little bit and then and again this is coming from a person that when i don't get what i want when i want it i get damn irritable but you know how long it takes me to get to that point before i start biting your heart off like a praying mantis oh, at least a month <laughs> At least a month, <laughs> give or take, before I start losing my mind. If you're really truly like saying, oh, I can't come over or I can't do this or I can't do that or like whatever, then I'm just like a month of that. And then I'm like, I'm a fucking you fuck you up. You know, that's, that's coming from me. I know that frustration, but it's not going to happen in a day. I'm calmer than that. Anyway, so. Yeah, she tells her this. And she's like, you know, maybe. <laughs> just, um, she says, let's just let him adjust to everything. You being there, you being transgender, all of those things. Just let him adjust to life before you just hop on him about the fact that he's not fucking you. Because again, there's this bigger fish to fry. Anyway. So... They are at a restaurant now, and she doesn't like when they get to that level that they did at the park. Ma'am, you started it. So she says, what are we going to do tomorrow? And he says, well, I missed the gym today, so I want to go to the gym. And she's like, okay. And he says, you know, maybe I'll go in the morning before you wake up. And she's like, no, no, I want to go with you. We can work out together. Cool. Great. It's a great bonding. And he says, okay, but let's go to a different gym. Not my gym. Let's go, let's go to a different gym that's better for people coming from international countries. <sighs> and she's like, why? Which I, I thought, why? Because, he says, you know, the ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> he says the ceilings are too short. So, because the ceilings are too short. <laughs> Fuck. The ceiling is too short. You're gonna go to this international gym where the ceilings are taller. <laughs> it didn't sound stupid when I was watching, but saying it back, I'm like, this guy's not fucking serious. Because isn't he like if he's not I think he's slightly taller than her. Um, it was hard to tell because she was wearing heels, but they look like they were about the same height when they met up at the airport. So she's going to be wearing fucking running shoes. She's going to be shorter than him. So what does it, what does it matter? Oh my God. <laughs> or at least like, she'll be like maybe the same height as him, which is not unusual. Even if you are a woman, there are some women who are fucking tall. So it's not that big of a deal. 
Like I'm not, I'm short, but I'm just like, there are women though that are tall. So it's just like, are you kidding? <laughs> Try again. Cause she's like, no, I think it's just because you don't want to explain me to the people you go to the gym with. And he's like, no, no, it's because of the ceilings. <laughs> They're too short. So how do you fit then? How do you fit in the ceilings then? That is too short. Make that make sense. Oh, <laughs> he's an idiot. Oh my God. Anyway. Um, so anyway, they're going to go to the international gym because the ceilings are taller. Fuck. Um, so she then says to him, listen, I changed my sex and I don't care what people have to say about the fact that I did. This was the only time I thought this was a genuine point of the conversation on either side. Because I'm, that is so, that's true. Like, she did something. She changed her whole ass gender in a time where I can't even imagine that was probably still foreign. We have to remember, even the transgender people were rejected out of the gay community or the LGBT community community now the lgbtq plus community but back then in the 90s it would have just been lgbt and they themselves were rejected from their own community so imagine that and then imagine a cisgendered straight person is just gonna be like the fuck in the late 90s she went through this her own mother didn't accept her and in this and she didn't have a relationship with her mom for a really long time because of it so of course she doesn't fucking because the fact that you could do that and survive that and not give a flying fuck what anyone had to say that's strength so i'll give her that so she's not gonna give a shit what anyone thinks so why should the person that i'm with give a shit about what people think now, I think that's wishful thinking because of the person you've chosen and from where he comes from. But I hear what she's saying. I thought it was the only true thing that I've heard her say so far, honestly. But it's just like, okay, I get it. But this is who you've picked. This is where he's from. And like, I don't, know how much he is going to change his thought process um and also you have weaponized your your journey your i don't want to call it a lifestyle because this is who she is but what she's been through in life she's weaponized that against him i'm gonna say it again so what do you expect this this processing for him is going to take some time. But he does say that I'm just uncomfortable being here when this is not accepted. And that is all fair. But I just don't know how much that's going to change even when he is in the States. And again, although I would like to think that, you know, North America anyways, isn't like this where how it is in Moldova. But... There are still people in the States that have a lot of learning to do. We saw that last season with Cleo and Christian and his fucking friends talking about Cleo the way they did. We still have a long way to go. Um, so then she says, I think I just got clocked. And she thinks that when she said what she said, that the couple that's kind of maybe across the way from them heard her say that and then she just kind of says like they have this look of ew on their face i'm not sure if that's true because we didn't see that but we do see like the camera looking over at them and can see like at least the guy kind of looking over at them but i do wonder if he's looking because there's a whole fucking ass camera crew in this restaurant and then you see nikki who looks like darcy 
You know, I, I do wonder if that's the problem. <laughs> I don't know, though. Anyway, he, um, she says, I've had enough of this anyways because my cat is neglected and it needs to eat. Ew. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. I would say more so that, not even cat, because that sounds bad. But you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but I didn't like I don't like that. But anyways, that's it for Justin Igor for this week. So we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we will be jumping in with Clayton. Yay! Because I don't care for Clayton. I care for Closet Mom. So we'll be back with Closet Mom when we come back. <laughs> Do you want to spice up your love life? Well, you can make that happen by going to Love Shop where you can get sorts of different things, whether it's for both you and your partner or just for yourself. For solo play, you can get things, all types of vibrators, maybe more kinky type toys, or you can just buy what every person may need like lingerie or protection or even just something to make it a little more fun like games or novelty things you can do all of this by going to love shop and you can use our unique coupon code reality t2 to get 10 percent on anything your hearts desire so that's love shop dot ca l-o-v-e-s-h-o-p dot c-a and use our unique coupon code reality2 that's r-e-a-l-i-t-e-a and the number two and we're back so we are going to talk about Clayton. He's 30 and from Lexington, Kentucky. So we see guinea pigs. We see guinea pigs. And he has two of them named Chocolate and Baby Pig. He says that they have different noises for each mood that they experience. And I said they sound very cute. He also says he has two chihuahuas. And I said, what the fuck? One of them is broken. What the hell? And then he says, but I also have another roommate. And that is my mom. Who lives in a walk-in closet. Hi, closet mom. We've been waiting for you. Um, and he says that this closet is attached to the living room. So he says that she is saving up for her own place. Um, but one day she opens his the, the closet door and says, This is my place. And she plopped herself in the walk-in closet. Um says it's the perfect size. And he says that. You know, it's hard living with his mom. Um, It's not a lot of space. Duh. And it will only get worse because Anna Lee, his fiance, is going to be coming. The other thing that he also mentions is that I think he mentions or she mentions or someone mentions that it's going to be temporary. His mom living, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, Temporary for his mom to be living in his place. It was, uh, yeah, it's been three years, so not, not temporary. Um, so he starts talking about Annalie. They met while doing, um, doing a language learning app. That's where they met. And then, um, She's from Peru. So he went to Peru to meet her. And by the fourth day, he proposed. 
And she said, aw, but nothing else. So <laughs> he says, yeah, you know, it was a little delayed in the response, but it's all good. So he says that he wants to get a table for the kitchen. But he says that his mom has a lot of stuff. And you see her stuff. And he says that, you know, she maybe has some hoarder tendencies. Nah, bro, she's a she's a hoarder. You have a hoarder living amongst you. My goodness. Um, so of her stuff, some of the stuff has been opened, but most of it has not been used at all. Um, he ends up finding an expired granola bar that expired two years prior. So that's just, yeah. Yeah, this woman's a hoarder. This woman is all out, an all-out hoarder. And she's living in your house with two dogs and two guinea pigs. And now your fiance is going to be there. So there's going to be four humans and four pets. So they end up going to a storage, storage unit. My God. There is stuff literally to the, t- to the opening of the storage unit. And I'm assuming it's all her stuff. Yeah. Because I think he was going to put something in the storage unit. There's no space to put that anywhere. Um, then we see Annalise calling, and I wrote here, oh, this guy is running. Very similarly to another guy who's from Kentucky, who we don't see on our TV screens anymore. That's for the best. And I said, okay, so is this run with the men a common thing amongst men in Kentucky? Because, Wow. He literally ran just like him. It was, I want to see more of it. I'm ready for this guy to say five for five. You know, I'm I'm, I'm ready for it. Anyway. So she asks, will there be enough space for me? Nope. Not at all, ma'am. You don't even know. She's going to walk in that place and be like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, um... So he says that she has low tolerance for bullshit. And I said, same. I do too. Um, so then in the next scene, so much else to talk about there. In the next scene, we see he is taking his guinea pigs to the vet. Apparently, they are very chunky because his mom overfeeds them. That's not a fucking joke. If you overfeed a, a pet to an extreme, you could kill them. So how about your mom lay off the treats, tell her to lay off the fucking treats, maybe tell her don't feed the pigs. It's not like you can't come out of your room and feed your own goddamn pigs. So why can't you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like you work from home. You could just come out and say, let me feed my own pigs because my mom's overfeeding them. Anyway. um, So... We then find out that apparently in Peru, they eat guinea pigs. They're a delicacy. And according to her, tastes very good. Um, He's concerned about the lives of his guinea pigs uh, because of this. Listen, sir, they probably literally have guinea pig farms similarly to like, like we can't imagine here in North America eating dogs or cats, but they do in some Asian countries. They have farms. <laughs> You're not just going out there picking up your pet and saying, you know what? You look good tonight. You're, that's not what's happening. Because they also have them as pets. Now, I don't know if they have guinea pigs as pets in Peru. But um, they probably have, like, actual, like, farms for guinea pigs. So, she's probably not going to eat your... She's not going to, she's not going to eat your pig, your guinea pig. She's not going to, you're not going to walk in one day and see fatal attraction style. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. We see him going back to his house, putting the pigs back in their cages. And we just see shit everywhere. Again, just shit everywhere. And he says, but you know what? I'm in my room all the time. He works in his room. He plays video games in his room. 
And then this is where we find out that he has one particular game that he has played for most of his life. He has accumulated 20,000 plus hours on this particular video game. We don't know what video game it is, but... um, Which is the equivalent of two years and 103 days. Jesus. So then we see that he's playing this game or a game with his friend Cameron who is a friend that he has had now for 13 years. This is an online friend that he met while playing playing video games. Um, and he's his best friend. He considers him his best friend. He says they have not met. He says, I don't know why we haven't met, though, because he says, like, when we were younger, that made sense because you, you couldn't do that. But now we're adults, but we still haven't seen each other. So he's like, you know, maybe we need to meet in person or whatever. But I didn't find this at all unusual. Um, I didn't think this was weird. Um, I think this is a normal thing. Um, you make friends when you play video games. I personally don't play video games, so I don't. This is not my world. But I do get it. I had a friend who met and married her husband. Well, I don't know if it was necessarily a video game, but she did more like online games and stuff. She had known him for years before they ended up like being together and ultimately getting married and they're still married. So, you know, like it's not unusual. Um, there's some happy stories that come out of that. So whatever. Um, so then he tells Cameron that Anna Lee has one big flaw here. And that flaw is that she has not told her father about him at all. And Cameron says, well, that's weird because, like, does she have a relationship with her father? Like, why doesn't he know? And he says, I don't know why he doesn't know, but they do have a relationship. They talk all the time. He actually calls her, like, 20 times a day. Uh... Are we sure that's her dad? <laughs> Are we sure it's actually her dad and not a sugar dad? I'm just saying. Because 20 times a day, that's excessive. I mean, I guess, sure, it can happen, but it just seems kind of excessive. Especially, like, when you're not actually telling him, by the way, I'm in his relationship. And you're, she's literally pulling kind of this in-between between Manuel and, uh, Thais, she's kind of doing something similar between these two. She's up and ditching America without telling her father that she's ditching America, that she's ditching and going to America. She's basically going to tell him, oh, by the way, I got this new job in America, so I'll be here when really she doesn't have a job. She has a husband coming. So yeah, there's that. But then it's also a little Thais because Thais didn't tell her father that she was even marrying, like, what's his face Patrick that she wasn't marrying him and but at least her father knew she was in the states it's just so weird and I guess it worked out fine for Tyson and Patrick because they're still together beautiful baby girl whatever all's going wood for them I don't know about this though because at least Patrick had <laughs> he had a house <laughs> that didn't have clutter all up in it or a mom in the closet she maybe needs to come out of the closet. I don't know what to tell her. But this is totally different situation and it's not going to go good. I don't have any hope for this, for these people. But um, yeah, his friend tells him basically that, um, you know, you need to get her to say something to her father before you marry her. Like, that's pretty important. Um. And he also says, Clayton also says that he has been hidden before in previous relationships. So this is kind of bringing up that emotion of feeling hidden. Because she's doing the exact same thing. So I guess we'll see how that goes. But that is it for Claus and Mom. I mean, Clayton and uh, Anna Lee. Next, Gino and Jasmine. So not a whole lot with Gino and Jasmine, but we'll we'll get into it. So the place is gross. 
the end. That's it. See you next week. I don't know what else to say. But yeah, no, their house is gross. Or I should say his house is gross. Um, well, it's her house now too. But I mean, when it looks like that, it's his house. I don't know what to say. Because, I mean, we see it. I don't really want to go through it again. But we see like dust. And honestly, I can't remember anything else besides the toilet and the fucking shit stains that's in the toilet. This guy, I say burn the whole house down to the ground. This is disgusting. Like, ew. And just completely unnecessary. You can't put some toilet bowl cleaner in your toilet and scrub the fuck out of that freaking toilet bowl. Like, I don't he's gross um and then jasmine is basically like we see her scratching a lot and she says that she is so itchy and she can't stop and she tells us that she has like a rash that's starting to spread everywhere and he asks her like didn't this happen before in panama yes she says but not like this like this is different she says um, and she says that she is used to, okay, so let me back up a little bit. So he starts asking like what she's eaten and she says, I had, I, I think she said she had peanut butter, which, well, no, that's, this is peanut butter, peanut butter and almonds. So she's like, I'm used to eating peanut butter and almonds. Like I'm used to this. But he started to wonder if maybe she's had an allergic reaction. And she says, this is not an allergic reaction. This this is because the house is dirty. And he says, well, if it was the dust, then you would be getting sick like every day, sir. She's only been here a few days. But we see later, she, she, they have 86 days to get married. So she's only been here for four fucking days. So maybe, I don't know, she's inhaling the shit, literally and figuratively, and that's now just starting to get into her system and, you know, fuck her up a little bit. I don't know. Just the thought. It's not going to happen immediately. She's going to like walk in immediately. But like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not how it works. It's not how, is she having, do I think she's having an allergic reaction? Yes, because you can be allergic to dust, dummy. You know what I mean? You can have that. Of course, you can have an allergic reaction. And she's clearly breaking out in hives. What she needs is some Benadryl. <laughs> and she'll probably be fine. But then that doesn't then help the situation of your house is disgusting and it needs to be burned down to the ground. That's it. So... His idea of, like, a dirty home is kind of like if you're a hoarder and, um, and, you know, you don't, and you kind of, like, live like a slob, that's his idea of a dirty home. Are you, are you, sir, you're living like a slob. You may not be a hoarder, per se, because you don't seem to have, like, unnecessary shit everywhere, but you are a slob. Your toilet bowl has shit stains in it. You didn't vacuum. You didn't think to clean your bed. You have, quote unquote, cream stains on your sheets. Your dust on your headboard. You haven't changed your pillows in God knows how long because we'll get to it. You're disgusting. You literally had to clean your comforter while she's there and clean and change your sheets while she was there because you should have done it, I don't know, before. And you were trying to tell me you don't live in like slob. You're disgusting. So you're disgusting. I'm sorry. I can tell you right now, I could not use that toilet. I was like, I refuse. I want a brand new toilet right now. No, no, no. It's just like, just like Shekinah said, I'm not sleeping on this bed because you fuck 2,500 women in this bed. I'm not using this toilet because there's about 2,500 shits that is stuck on your toilet bowl. Like, it's just not happening. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so Jasmine says that her doctor in Panama says that it's her dermatitis, I think. 
And that's probably what's happening here. And then he says, but you were living in a dirty apartment with mice. (laughs) He's an idiot. You know she's going to flip her fucking lid if you say some bullshit that doesn't, it's probably A, not sure. It's probably, I mean, there might have been mice, but you can't always, you can control mice as much as you can. We've had mice in our house and we do not live like slobs by any means of the stretch of the imagination. It's just sometimes it's shit happens. So that's not abnormal. But having mice in your home doesn't equate to you live like a slob or you have a dirty home or anything like that. So for him to equate the two things, I'm like, are you stupid? Chances are you've had more than mice in your house. I'm just saying. So yeah, he's an idiot. And she, of course, freaks out at him. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I didn't have mice in my house. What are you talking about? Like, she's going off. And she has, says, like, you, you know, I, I can't remember she talks about the toilet, but there's one thing she does say that is probably what's happening here, which is a whole other situation. But she literally says, you have black stuff in your bathroom. And I can't remember if she said, like, where? I think she might have said in the towel. I can't remember. But she said, you have black stuff. Honey, that's black mold. The fucker has black mold in his home. And sometimes that can't be helped, especially depending on the age of the home. But that's what's happening. And that's probably why she's having a reaction. And that can happen fairly quickly with black mold. That's what's happening. So. Okay. Um... So she asks, can I just get a new pillow for fuck's sakes or new blankets? Because maybe that will help. Um, And then he says, yeah, I can take you to the store and we can do that. But before he even says like all of that, he decides to take his hand and brush the headboard and say, see, no dust. Do you want a prize? She probably made you clean it before she slept in the bed. Do you want a prize? You do need to keep up with it, though. It doesn't just stay that way. You do have to dust off your headboard every, I don't know, at least once a week, a couple times a week. Fuck, I'll give you once a month. But if she also has an allergy to dust, like we and my family, we have allergies to dust. We clean every two weeks, like full house dusting and all that every two weeks. And you'd be surprised how much dust is in your house after so I'm just gonna stop, stop saying he's an idiot um so yeah he says he'll buy take her to go buy pillows and, but he says I'm good I'm okay I'm perfectly fine sleeping on disgusting pillows it's fine we'll get to how fine he is with this so we are now at the store and we're shopping for bedding as we mentioned earlier and Jasmine went to urgent care Gino says and she is feeling much better now because she got like a shot of something and he says thank god because she would have killed me yeah she would have so Jasmine asks the employee there how many times do you change your pillows and she says for me I change it every six months that's extensive that's that that's extreme I'm gonna get to why I say that's extreme she says she does hers every six months that's for me Gino says, yeah, maybe change mine every six years. That's another extreme. And here's why I say this is extreme. We, in my home, we don't buy new pillows every six months. I've probably had my pillow now for probably just under two years, but we wash our pillows. We'll wash our pillows. We also have pillow like not case they're cases but they're like the pillow protectors we also have those that helps keep the pillows the actual pillow themselves clean we wash those as well um more often than we do the pillow the pillow the actual pillows but we wash ours and once it's really gross and disgusting or we feel it's really gross and disgusting then of course we're going to replace them um but that's what we do in my home. We don't buy new pillows every six months. They're expensive. 
We're also not going to probably sit with a pillow for six years either, because I guarantee you, Gino has never stuck his pillow in a washing machine ever. I guarantee the first time he, when he washed his com- his comforter was the first time in forever. And as a thing too, we would actually, because we can't wash all of our comforters in our washing machine because our comforters are too big, but we would wash, I would, I would be the one to take my whole family's comforters to the laundromat and we would do that every year. I would literally take a day off of work, go and do it. This was pre-COVID. We have done it since COVID too, but we would do that every year, spend the money and get our comforters washed. So. But I guarantee you, Gino has not even done that until uh, Jasmine showed up in his house. He is disgusting. So, um, then we see a comforter, or Jasmine sees a comforter. It's all like soccer themed. And she says that Wanse really likes soccer. He actually wants to be a soccer player when he grows up. And he has a birthday coming up. It's a 11th birthday and it appears that he wants to have like a full themed soccer birthday party but she's struggling because this is going to be the first birthday that he's had that she's not going to be there for and um she just doesn't want him to feel abandoned and she feels like she doesn't deserve him and then she starts crying and, she, and Gino hugs her and she's like, am I a bad mom? That's so, that's uh, so sad. Um, but he says, no, you're not a bad mom. I've seen you with him. You're a great mom. Um, and then she decides that she wants to video call, wants to say, and, you know, they're talking, whatever. And she says, she says muy bien, right? That that's Spanish. But whatever he says, it sounds similar because Portuguese and Spanish sounds similar, but it's still two different languages. And she, whatever he says, he says it in Portuguese, not Spanish. And she says, no, that's that's Portuguese. Say this. I think it was muy bien. Say that's Spanish. And and she's like, she just keeps giving him a side eye. And she's like, stupid gringo. <laughs> stupid gringo. That's so funny. But yeah, it was funny because I was like, okay, whatever. But anyway, so, so this party, yes, is going to be all soccer themed. He kind of wants, I, I was it Madrid. That was it. He was all, you know, themed soccer. I guess that particular soccer team was all themed. He's all about it. Um. So, yeah, she shows Wanse the 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 comforter, and he seems to like it. And I guess that's gonna be his his birthday gift. Um. Anyway, so they go to cash out. They buy the pillows. They cost just under thirteen dollars per pillow. And um, he does buy both of them. And she says, oh, my God, these pillows in Panama, they'd be like 100 bucks. Shit. And um, she says, this is a historical moment um, because he's buying the pillows because he's cheap, as we all know. Um, But that's it. That's pretty quick with them. So... Now we're on to Nick and Devin. And, and again, this was very, very short because we didn't really get a whole lot um, with them this episode. Still, I'm sure it'll pick up next week because we're meeting the parents. But so we see them exploring and she's nervous that um, that I think they're in Seoul, right? Yeah, they're in Seoul. She's worried that this is what he's used that he this is what he's used to, and he's not going to be able to adapt well in Cersei because Cersei is way different. And they go get some food. This is chicken, but Devin does like the chicken. It looks so good, so good. I wanted it. I was jealous. I'm like, I want that. I want that right now. It looked amazing. Um, 
So they're going to be meeting his parents the following day. And she says she's still nervous because she doesn't speak Korean. And his, or does, I think she says she doesn't speak much Korean, but um, his parents don't speak any English. And he's telling her different things that she would need to do, like smile um, and don't cry. <laughs> and he says that his family, or he says his mom, is not like a happy, upbeat type person. She's very stush, I guess. Um, and she says, or he says that she would prefer that he marry a Korean woman over an American woman. But he never told her that before. So, because he does tell her this, that she would prefer, his mother would prefer that. Anyway, the next day, the bed looks perfectly intact. It doesn't look like it broke. He didn't break the bed, guys. He didn't even get any because, well, he tells us that although the first day went good and he didn't get any sex, he says the reason he didn't get any sex, though, was because he farted and she kicked him out. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Listen, are men gross? Yeah. Do men fart? Sure. But like so you're marrying him get used to it get used to the farts get used to the birds get, get used to the weird ass fucking noises that men tend to do who cares sometimes you're just gonna look at them and think why do i want to fuck you at any point at any time but then that quickly changes and then you realize oh that's why <laughs> so it was kind of weird to me that because maybe again like it, you get to a point where you get comfortable with the person and you just don't give a shit and i'm just like so so what who cares if he farted and it sounded so like childish to me actually when he said that, that was the reason why because i was expecting something else i just thought maybe she was just so tired she didn't want to have sex which is fine but he farted i mean it can kill the mood but temporarily maybe this is me I need to process that. Anyway, um, so they're going to be traveling from Seoul to where he's from, um, and his family thinks, or he says anyway, so his family thinks that American women, that all they do is get drunk and have one night stands. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, there are some people who get drunk and have one night stands. There's nothing wrong with that. But then there are people who won't do that and just be, you know, tend to find or try to find. That's just, that's just stereotyping a whole ass country. Whole ass country with lots of people in it. Who, dude, anyway. Um, anyway, so anyway, they get on the train to go there and one hour later they are at their destination and he doesn't even tell her they're at the destination that they're getting if he just gets up and figures that she'll follow him and he says here that his dad not friendly guy not at all his mom serious career woman and uh Devin tends to get overwhelmed and she could cry she could do that and guess what his parents are not gonna like that this is not gonna go well guys this is going to go really bad. Um, real bad. But then again, this is 90 day OG. Not before the 90 days. So let's see what happens. I guess, question mark. But this is not going to go good. This is not going to go good. Like, the minute that... Oh, the minute... The, oh, God. Okay. The <laughs> minute he said, my dad, not friendly. I'm like, oh, shit. My mom, serious career woman, she's not going to take that. She better not cry. Oh my god. Anyway, that's it for Nick and Devin um, for this week. Next time on, Annalie is here in the hoarder house with Closet Mom. Ashley and Manuel are going to be going to couples therapy. He just got here, y'all. And they're already going to couples therapy. Okay. 
Um, but he doesn't want to do it. I'm not surprised by this. Men don't do well with therapy. We need to do better with that. Men, it is okay to go to therapy and work on your mental health if if you need to, right? And if you are ready to. Moving on. Um, so then um, we're meeting with the parents. Guess what, y'all? Like I said, not going to go good because Devin is crying. Because he literally says to her, are you crying right now? Oh, my God. They don't speak English, so maybe we can... Maybe we can figure this out. Maybe, wait, wait, maybe she's crying because they accepted her. That's a possibility. We know how the editors usually do this shit. Um, Nikki is meeting Justin Igor's friends. Then Nikki decides to drop the biggest bomb we've all heard, which is, you know, I did some shit like drugs. And I also prostituted myself. Does he know this before you just drop the fucking bomb on people? They're just getting used to the fact that you were, like, you're a transgender woman. And then you're going to say, by the way, I was a sex worker, too. Sex workers work. I'm not saying anything about that. But maybe don't tell his friends. Because this is a lot. And um, then Jasmine found lipstick under the car seat and immediately thinks he's cheating on her because, yeah. But that's it for 90 Day OG for this week. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast um and you can rate a review on either apple Podcasts or spotify and i have a new thing that i want to start trying and that is that every four or five star review that we get i'll read it on the podcast so if you want to hear your review on the podcast please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're able to rate and review. Um, and if you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Reality T Times 2 on Facebook, Reality T Times 2 Podcast on Instagram or Threads, Reality T Times 2 Pod on Twitter. You can also find us on reddit at reality t times two pod and uh you can also email us at reality t times two at hotmail.com and don't forget you can find us on youtube at reality t times two you can also subscribe like comment on there as well we greatly appreciate that And don't forget that I do have another podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different things. Um, We currently have, you know, this number can definitely change, but we currently have about eight episodes. Um, Roughly, we've talked about all kinds of different things. We have a lot of fun over there. So please go take a listen to us over at Next Take Podcast which you can find us at on YouTube at Next Tape Podcast. You can also find us on our website, solo.to forward slash Next Tape Podcast. And don't forget, we have a website, and that is at solo.to forward slash reality t times two. And we also have a Discord, and I believe that's reality t times two as well. So you can find us there. Um but that's basically it. That's all the stuff. Of course, everything here will that I've just listed will be in our show notes, all discount codes, um, special links to everything that we put in our ads are also in our show notes. And yeah, that's basically it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.
have you ever thought of starting your very own podcast? Doing the research, I found something that would have made editing easy and seamless and makes the podcasting experience just that much easier. And I am talking about Ludo. This is a podcast software that I use for our editing of our episodes. It is amazing. It is easy. You're also able to get help from chat, doing chats and getting the information that maybe you just need a little more help with. They also have access to different articles that can also help you that have been just godsends for me. Also with the Ludo, you can create clips, you can do your ads, thus thus like this very one I'm doing right now, and you can create your trailer very seamlessly just by the clicks of buttons. You can also use Aludu to publish your episodes just straight from the software. It's so easy. I highly, highly recommend it. You can get access to Aludu by using our unique link, which you can find on our show notes, just down there at the bottom at the show notes. And you can get access to an easy software.